Now that we went over the formulas for calculating the confidence interval for the slope of a regression line in our previous video, we're ready to actually make a confidence interval. And what we're going to do is we are going to make an 85% confidence interval for the slope of the regression line. of the data from missing assignments versus exam score. And we're going to do most of this work on Excel. Here on Excel, I've already gone through and done what we saw in our previous videos. I've got the scatter plot on the right. We've inserted the trend line and told it to put the equation for the trend line on here, y equals negative 4.32x plus 89.9. Also in my data on the left side, we see x and y, the missing assignments, and the exam scores. I've gone through and used Excel to find x squared, y squared, and xy. Then I've copied those formulas down. Then we have a row for the sums, where I have found the sum of all of those values above. We're going to use those numbers in order to calculate all of the pieces. I've copied the formulas down below in this black box. For the sum of squares in the x, y, and x, y, the standard error, the overall error, and the confidence interval. Let's go through the steps then of finding each of those calculations. First, we're going to find the sum of squares in the x direction. That is equal to the sum of the x squared, so I'll grab the x squared, minus the sum of the x's squared, which is shift 6 for the caret symbol and 2, divided by the sample size, which is 6. Then we'll find the sum of squares in the y direction, which is equal to the square of the y's, or the sum of the y squareds, minus the sum of the y's. We'll square that answer and divide by the sample size of 6. Then we'll find the sum of squares in the xy's, which is equal to the sum of the xy's minus the sum of the x's times the sum of the y's divided by the sample size, which again here is 6. Once I've got those values, then I'm ready to figure out what the critical t value is and find the standard error. To get the critical value, I think about my distribution. We want 85% in the middle, which leaves how much outside in the tails? Well, if 85% is outside, 15% or 0.15 is going to be in the tails. So to find my t sub alpha over 2, we're going to say equals t dot inverse dot two tails, open a parentheses. We found the probability in the tails was 0 0.15, comma, the degrees of freedom is always two less than the sample size when working with regression. The sample size is 6, 2 less than 6 is 4, and so my critical t value is 1.778. The standard error then is equal to the square root of the sum of squares of the y's. And actually, I need to make sure I put the numerator in parentheses. The sum of squares of the y's minus my slope, which we found was negative 4.3186, just taking it right off of the uh, graph there, times the sum of the xy's, the sum of squares of the xy's. Close the parentheses, divided by n minus 2, so in parentheses 6 minus 2, or I could just type in 4. Then I close the parentheses on the square root, and I get a standard error of 9.7735. Now we're ready to calculate, finally, the overall error of the confidence interval. The error formula is that t alpha over 2 times the standard error divided by the square root of the sum of squares in the x direction. 
When I hit enter, we find the error is about 4.00. For my confidence interval, then, we're going to have a low value and a high value. To get the low value, we can say equals to our point estimate, the negative 4.3186. That's our slope. And we'll subtract the error to get negative 8.32. For the high value, we'll say equals negative 4.3186 and add the error to get a high value of negative 0.31, about 4. So we found our confidence interval, the 85% confidence interval, for the slope of the regression line was between negative 8.32 and negative 0.314. I can then interpret this result in context to say that we are 85% confident the y value, the test scores or the exam scores, are decreasing. because they're negative, at a rate between 8.32 and 0 0.314 points per missing assignment. So while we had six sample points, we can say in general for all students who take this class, we're 85% confident their exam score will decrease between 8.32 and 0.314 points per missing assignment that they have in the class.